Hello everyone, Rambles here, and welcome back to World of Warcraft Classic Hardcore and our Tauren Shaman's cell phone journey. Thank you guys very much for clicking on the video and joining me here today. I do appreciate it, and I hope everybody is doing well. Uh, we have taken the flight from Ogrimmar over to Thunderbluff. And I did remember to train the next rank of skinning before I left, which I had forgotten to do last time. So that is done. Uh, we have a couple of quests to pick up here. I think the leather working trainer has a quest for us. Let's head up the plateau and check that out. And then, yeah, and then we'll leave Thunder Bluff. We're going to go after the broken tools. We're probably going to go after some harpies. A lot of things to take care of here still in Mulgore. Peace, friend. Uh, yeah, we got a couple of things here. Gathering leather. Bring 12 pieces of light leather. And then the, then the Kotohide bag. Bring four light leather and four coarse thread. Ancestors watch so over this one we can do right now. Ancestors watch over you. That's actually going to give us a pattern to make six slot bags. Which, you know, that's it's good we can replace this one, the four slot. Obviously it's something that like you wish you could somehow get this a little bit earlier. You know what I mean? Because at this point, it's not super helpful. Maybe we could have come here really early. Maybe there's no, the like, level on this quest. Maybe it's something we could have done as soon as we got the Bloodhoof Village and picked up skinning. I don't know. Might have been a good idea to try to prioritize it. Uh, either way, for that we need... Ooh, see, look at that. That's the other problem. Even if we had prioritized getting this pattern really early... We need thin Kodo leather, leather, and I'm pretty sure we'd have to kill Kodo to get that. And I don't think there are any, like, really low-level Kodos. Pretty sure the Kodos here probably start... Uh, like, level 10? Level 11, maybe? Alright, let's head over to the lift. I don't think there's anything else we need to do here. And I will do my best not to fall off the lift. We have had one hardcore death in the Undercity falling down the elevator shaft. Back on Blood Cell Buccaneers. So far I've never had a death falling off a of Thunder Bluff, but to be fair we don't spend a lot of time in Thunder Bluff. So, the Harpies here are level 10. Maybe this is something that if I'm trying to play smart, I'm trying to stay alive, maybe I come back and do this one later on. I know for sure we're going to have another Water Well to cleanse. Right now we have the Thunderhorn cleansing. Eventually we'll get one up here. And so we'll have reason to be back in this area. Maybe we don't need to prioritize this right now just because we're nearby. 
Let's head down here. We're going to work on the Wind Fury Talons, which is a level 8 quest. Oops. And then we'll go after Dwarven Digging. I just lost the Dwarf Warrior yesterday on stream as I'm recording this. So, I'm still a little heartbroken over that. And I'm also wanting to be a little bit more careful, a little bit more thoughtful. Focus a little bit more. And just actually give it an honest shot at staying alive. And I think that just means going back to doing like more risk analysis. On basically everything I decide to do, whether I'm deciding to go after a quest or whether I'm deciding to try to level up a weapon skill while I'm traveling, I need to kind of do like a risk assessment when I decide to do basically anything. And just think to myself like, okay, here's what we're going to do. What's the risk of doing this? Um, yeah, and then maybe that'll lead to fewer stupid mistakes. That's the goal at least. And if you guys have any tips on things that you do to keep your characters alive in hardcore, I would love to hear from you in the comments. few of you guys have pointed out that I don't have War Stomp on my bar. I know. I'm sorry. It did take me a while. Uh, let's put War Stomp out. That's a that's a, like an extra interrupt, so... Actually, one of the best things about the Tauren. This is on a two-minute cooldown. It stuns all enemies, or up to five enemies, within eight yards. So this is a really good, like, oh crap button. We've pulled four guys. We War Stomp. Probably shouldn't have used it there. Uh, and then we have two seconds where we can get enough distance to, you know, drop a slowing totem and get away. I think War Stomp combined with Earthbind Totem should let us run from most situations. Well, look at that. What a surprise. I have an unspent talent point. Let's pop that into shield spec.
I have spotted a chest. Let's see if we can work our way back to that. On the Shaman, I'm going to try to get better at dropping a totem whenever I think I can pull multiple guys to the same spot, or at least fight in the same area. That way we're taking advantage of the totem sometimes. When we get Fire Totem, I'll probably have that as a part of the rotation, if we can afford the mana. But for the other totems, I will try to find situations where I can use them effectively. Since it's kind of a big part of the class... I realize if I'm just kind of neglecting them, then there's a lot of the toolkit that I'm probably not taking advantage of. I feel like if I can fight at least two guys at one totem, then the mana cost for dropping the totem is worth it. Alright, that is 8 out of 8. Let's fight our way out of here and we'll head over to the dwarf area.
And we have another chest back here. We're definitely going to get that. This might be a two-pull, which could be rough. Definitely a two-pull. We'll have to watch for the heal. There's the heal. Let's interrupt that. He's also healing. Okay. Could have been worse. Could have been a double heal. That wasn't too bad because we were such a higher level. And there is another small red pouch. Okay, I'll take it. That's uh, all six slot bags at least. Two red, two brown. Not bad. Uh, we're looking for the prospector picks. We need five of them. We need to shatter them at one of the anvils up top. Look at that, our, our earth totem is getting into trouble. Usually you only see that kind of behavior in fire totems. There's the heal I should have saved my shock for. She must have aggroed our totem. Yeah. See, I don't think there's a way for us to dismiss the totem in Classic Era. So if we lay down a totem, it's going to stay there for two minutes. Yeah, last two minutes. And that's a long time in Hardcore because the respawn rate in Hardcore is quite high. So, yeah, that makes me wonder, like, I guess I shouldn't lay a totem unless I'm going to fight many enemies in that area. Because then, like, we turn our back on the totem, and then the totem is aggroing mobs. Could be very, very bad for us. But, you know, part of me wonders if not having Strength of Earth totem is equivalent to being on a paladin and not doing blessing of might. You know, like you would not you don't really ever want to be in combat as a pally without blessing of might. Unless you're like intentionally using another blessing. And I wonder if like the totems are going to be the same way where if I'm not able to lay them down every fight, 
I'm just like really underutilizing the class. But then obviously we see that laying them down every fight could potentially lead to problems. Increases strength by 10. I guess I'd have to check on a classic Pally and see what rank 1 of Blessing of Might gives. This gives 10 strength. Uh, we're going to run over here and we're going to cleanse the Thunderhorn Water Well. And then, I, I think we'll keep heading northeast. Oh, well, you know what? We're not. We're going to head back to town. We have five inventory slots left. So we'll go back to town first. Uh, we'll clean the inventory. We'll do a little bit of crafting. And then we have stuff over to the east to take care of. I'm not sure if I want to go after the Venture Company people yet. I feel like this may be one of the last things that we do in the zone. Because going after the name guy is going to be very dangerous. Alright, let's turn all the quests in, and then we'll do a little bit of first aid. We might be- I think we can actually learn Heavy Linen at 40, so maybe we should do that. And we might have a tiny amount of leather working to do. Let's just jump over here, and we'll do that really quick. Uh, we were making... Boots? Gloves? 
It looks like gloves. Oh, that's right. You know what? Maybe we should be saving our leather for this quest. Maybe. Yeah, we'll, we'll save for the quest for now. Oh, we got another quest popped up over here, the Hunter's Way. What is this? Uh, four Flatland Prowler Claws. Okay, I think that's up near Thunder Bluff. Yeah, okay, so that's good. We're heading in that direction anyway. Let's check out the first aid trainer. Heavy linen, there we go. Okay, let's make some of those. That should get us to 50. We can train journeymen. your back and then we did hit level 12 I'm pretty sure we need to train well met. may the eternal sun shine how may I aid you goodbye And this one is for eight Prairie Alpha Teeth. That should also be, yeah, same area as the Cougars. Okay, so with that stuff done, let's head out here to the Northeast. Alright, now I feel like that's basically as good as it gets as far as inventory space for us. You could argue that we could sell a stack of these that we don't need as many, but I'm going to hang on to them for now. And I'll, I'll just kind of try to start chugging them just to get through at least this one stack. And then we'll be more conservative with the remaining five.
Okay, we should be in the area now where we can find our quest objectives. Here we go, we're looking for Prairie Wolf Alphas and Flatland Prowlers.
you know what? We talked about training and I didn't do it, did I? I did not. Uh, the good thing is we don't get anything like super DPS related until level 14, so I don't feel too bad. Fire Nova Totem, Fire Nova Totem doesn't help us. Healing Wave 3 would be good, but we don't really need it. Purge we don't really need right now. And res we can't use. So yeah, kind of a useless level for us at the moment. Level 14 is going to be big with a new rank of Earth Shock and Lightning Bolt. They have a threatening growl that reduces strength and agility, sort of acts like a demoralizing shout. Oh man, I love Mulgore. I love the rolling plains that you can like have these clear lines of sight and then like the stands of trees. I really wish we would see like more zones that have a similar aesthetic. Maybe not all like the same color palette, but just kind of the, the same layout. Where there's like, there's only the one road. A lot of it is just like open land. And yeah, I just love the rolling hills with the, the long view sights. It's just a very pleasant place to be. I'd love to see like an autumn version and a winter version of Mulgore. Like if seasons were to change, I think it would look really amazing in any seasonal color palette. It's probably hard to do from like a design perspective because I feel like when you're designing a zone you have a very specific idea for how it should feel, what the color palette should be. But man, I would love an MMO that had seasons that changed. Where you get to see the zones in at least two or three different seasons. Even if it's like an autumn-spring rotation or a summer-winter rotation. Man, that would be awesome. Just like built-in day-night cycle and built-in seasons. That would really up the ante for immersion, I think. But again, it would probably be hard from like a artistic design perspective. Because then like, you know, basically you have to design a zone four times if you want to have four seasons.
we're gonna drop a stone claw totem and that'll take this guy off of us for a second let's fall back a bit get lightning shield going oh man I love stone claw totem like the utility that the shaman has is kind of unparalleled you have a totem that taunts for you you have a totem that slows enemies down like just those two things alone coupled with the fact that you have heals makes you like very survivable very powerful in hardcore wow you have interrupts if you're a tauren you have multiple interrupts like realistically this should be a class like the paladin that we can keep alive because you know we don't have bubbles we don't have lay on hands but we do have a lot of utility at our disposal if we're smart about it if we grow the reflexes to use it when we have to then yeah i really i really want to make this character live at least into the level 30s oh i i don't want another prior like the warlock when we lost the warlock at 30 like that was okay we went out in a blaze of glory in a dungeon. We had a nice long journey to get to level 30. Like, it was it was okay. Losing the warrior south of level 20 was really hard. Especially because I lost it in the stupidest way. So I really want to just continue to grow my familiarity with this class and make sure this is one that lives for a while. We got a severing axe of the tiger. Two-handed axe. I'm actually, I'm pretty sure we can learn two-handed axes. I'm pretty sure because otherwise that would limit us to two-handed maces. Typically you have at least two options for equip. So I have to think, I know we can't learn two-handed swords. So I have to believe we can do axes and maces. I wonder where we have to go to train axes. This is probably an Ogremar thing. I should have checked that while I was there. Would have been a good idea. And like, that could actually be like a huge DPS upgrade. I'm kind of, uh... I'm kind of tempted to like, stop everything I'm doing. And go, and go pick that up. How close am I on this quest? Six out of eight. Hmm. Let me, maybe I should make sure. I mean, I'm pretty sure that we can check the weapon trainer in Thunder Bluff also. But I'm pretty sure Ogremar is where we would go for axes. It just, it seems like it makes more sense. 
Whereas, like, I think two-handed maces would be in Thunder Bluff. And maybe two-handed swords would be Undercity. Let's see if maybe we can wrap this quest up. Uh, on either way, even if I do it after recording, I, I want to get this weapon equipped, like, pronto. I, I probably, I probably, this is probably one of those things where, like, I should probably stop what I'm doing right now and go get this done. Because on cell phone, like, <laughs> uh, having that weapon is, is, like, weak as, oh, it's a level 5 green. Yeah, but it's a level 5 green. And I have a white quest item, and I don't know when I'm going to get something better. So, like, you know, it, it kind of sucks in one way because we're going into shield spec, right? So, like, maybe it's not worth it. Oh, you know what? Never mind. I'm stupid. This is classic era. So, Shaman, I, I can't even use it. I can't even use it yet. We can't use it until we spec into it. Okay. Dilemma solved. We can't use it anyway. I don't have to do anything. I'm an idiot. I, I can't keep my versions of the game straight. So yeah, we're not we're, we're, we're not doing that. Uh, too bad it couldn't have been a one-hander. All right, let's keep our fingers crossed. We really need a green one-handed mace or a green one-handed axe. Because yeah, go, especially going into shield spec like we are, like... Yeah, either way. I do have to say, being on solo cell phone, it makes you excited. As you can see, you get excited when a green drops. That's that's where I'm at. I kind of I've, I avoided cell phone for a long time, but I've really been enjoying this character, and I've really been enjoying just like the the starting from nothing. Even though, like, obviously early on, it's really tough with no bag space. It kind of like that that friction kind of like gets you into the character a little bit more in my opinion like having those moments when the journey is tough having those moments when you feel incredibly weak i kind of feel like that friction gets you more immersed i, I kind of want to go up here now and kind of string these two together we also have a quest to turn in back in thunder bluff a couple of things to turn in in Thunder Bluff, actually. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go down to Bloodhoof Village. We're gonna be back up by Thunder Bluff anyway. So no matter what, we'll be back up here to do the feathers. We'll be back up here to do the stuff at Red Rocks. And that'll be a better time to go up and turn those in. I don't... I think maybe one of them chains. But I think it's the one we haven't done yet. I think it's preparation for ceremony. Hunter's Way probably tra chains into something also. Hunter's Way might be the lead-in quest to, to uh, hunt down Arashe. Stupidly, I didn't set my hearthstone properly. We, we could have made this a little bit smoother. Right now, the hearthstone's set back in Razor Hill, which is not super useful to us. Although maybe what we'll do, since the Hearthstone is set back in Razor Hill, hmm, maybe I could do the Fire Totem quest next time and get that taken care of. We'd have to run from Razor Hill into the Barrens. We have to then run to a place in Duratar. And I feel like we then have to go into a little cave north of Razor Hill. 
uh, to do something with some burning blade guys. We're looking for an item. So it's a few different things. The quest is level 10. We are pretty close to being level 13. It would be nice to have the fire totem to pop down just for some additional DPS at times. It, it's basically like it's one more damage over time. So if you're stacking flame shock and lightning shield and you have a fire totem, <clears throat> excuse me, and you have a fire totem going, then it's like three dots. Suddenly you're a magical dot based warrior, which is pretty good, I think. So maybe we'll get, maybe we'll do that. I typically wait until I'm going to the crossroads. I'll think about it and uh, I, won't, I won't buy my Hearthstone yet uh, to Bloodhead Village. And I'll think if we want to do that now. I don't think it's going to be too substantial. We could, we could probably wait a couple levels if we want. I know sometimes people get annoyed when I don't go after my totems right away. Alright, I will actually train this time. That way we know how much silver we actually have. It, <laughs> we might actually be broke. We might be broke. Eight? Maybe I'm not training this stuff right now. We're not gonna train our res, obviously. Healing wave, rank three, I will train. The rest of it, I'm gonna hold off on. I don't think it's valuable to, tr to spend the money on the rest of it right now. What brings you here? We shall meet again. So we're like incredibly close to level. What are the odds that we can go find something like level seven to smack and uh, and get our level? What are the odds? I don't remember what level stuff was around here. Might not be worth kill XP anymore. L level seven, yeah, that'll do. We might need one, we might need a couple of them, but apparently level seven works. There we go. Excellent. This will be the fourth point in shield spec. Uh, and I'm kind of wondering, like, what are the odds we can get a better shield? You know, as soon as we buy a shield, a green one will drop. I remember getting a green shield dropping in here. Uh, one time I was doing the Venture Company quest. So maybe we'll just hold off. I'd, I'd hate to spend the money and have something drop, you know? Even if a white item were to drop, it might be better than what we have. Alright, guys, I'll tell you what, this is a great place for us to take a break for now. Thank you all so much for joining me on this journey. I really do appreciate all the support on the series. It does mean the world to me. So take care of yourselves out there and take care of each other. And we will see you back in Azeroth again very soon. Bye for now.